Okay, uh, you got Billy Medlock here, Bluegrass International Crooks in London, Kentucky. Uh, won't take much up of your time today, but I just want to explain some basics of brake chambers. Uh, I'm not going to get into detail on so much what they do as uh, how to identify them when you may come in needing one. So when you walk into our location and you ask the parts guys for a brake chamber, the first thing they're going to ask you, of course, is uh, you need a front. Or do you need a rear? The second thing, big thing is, is it a long stroke or short stroke? And most everybody knows, but there's a lot of people out there that don't. And we just want to make sure we give you the right chamber for your truck or trailer. So I'll, I'll just explain some real easy ways to identify them. Uh, first, this is a single service chamber. Uh, has no part brake on this end. Uh, this would be a short stroke chamber and one way of identifying short stroke on a service only chamber uh, a lot of them has a square around this rod here that's molded into the metal that means it is uh, long stroke so if it does not have the square it's a short stroke or look at the tag it have an s in the in the part number some of them stamped this particular one's not uh, so that's a short stroke service chamber only and that could be used on the front or the rear. Most commonly, this service chamber, this big Type 30, is used on the rear-rear tandem of a truck that doesn't have part brake on the rear-rear. And I'll explain that. So the next one over here, this is a 30-30 complete chamber, uh, universal. You, you can cut the rod uh, to suit the needs of the truck. But this right here is one easy way to identify short and long stroke right off the bat. This is how your DOT officers looking under the truck and take a quick glance. If it's square molding around the, the thread port, that square molding, you can bet money on it that it is a uh, long stroke chamber. So as you go over to this other one and you notice you got round ports around the thread. So that's the very easy way of telling the difference in a long stroke and short stroke. Another thing, long stroke, you got uh, uh, more of a wider area than the short stroke here in the middle. In a brake chamber, what it does is naturally it chambers air. So the more stroke, the more air that this thing holds. So what I was talking about earlier with this uh, being a uh, service chamber only, if you look at this part and look at this part, they're basically identical. So this is a chamber that does not have a part break. This is a chamber naturally that does have a part break. A few years back, it was common to see a road tractor that wasn't a very heavy duty truck uh, only have a part break on the front tandem axle. On the rear tandem, they had service brake only. Um, so these are serviceable. The part brake side of a brake chamber is not serviceable. The clamp is completely crimped on. You do not want to take and cut that clamp off any time whatsoever. There are 1,800 pounds of pressure on this spring, preloaded. The upper one, you notice they put a bolt in there. You can remove that bolt and remove that clamp and replace that pancake or diaphragm inside safely. But like I said, the lower part, if you have an older one and it has a clamp with a bolt in it, do not take that apart. Like I said, 1,800 pounds of pressure on that spring. So, like I said, most, most nowadays you look at your new, newer tandem road tractors, uh, heavy duty, severe duty, whatever, they're going to have a part brake on both tandem axles. Front axle, very rare to see a front steer axle with a, uh, with a part brake. So, these are universal assemblies, uh, long stroke, short stroke, universals, you can cut the rod. Uh, so we're going to move over to another one here, <clears throat> which is a front uh, steer axle, most commonly a Type 24. Um, and, and on these, they don't put the ports, they don't identify them with a round or square molding. Hit, uh, the only way of identifying these, uh, they'll either have a tag on them that's saying it, or it's actually cast in it. or you can go with the square hole around the rod here. 
If it's got that square hole or if it's got a molding that sticks up that's square, that means it's a long stroke. Uh, so that's a steer axle. It's a That's a preset. It's got the welded uh, clevis. Uh, you don't have to do any cutting with the rod or anything like that. It's a lot simpler to put on. Also, if you look at <clears throat> some differences here, Uh, on these universal ones, they got a regular clevis with one pin hole, one pin. Uh, this one's got two. If you have two, you're going to have automatic slack adjusters. Also, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to have automatic slacks. You're going to have ABS system uh, as well, and it's going to be a long stroke. And I'll say pretty much anything from 1995 up. 93 is when they went to ABS brakes. 95, they started doing long strokes. 96, they realized automatic slack adjusters work better than manuals. <clears throat> so pretty much anything from the mid-90s up has auto slacks, has long stroke chambers, and has ABS system. And I'll say pretty much. The best thing, one of the best things to do if you come in and you don't know if you've got a square port or round port or long stroke or short stroke, the guys at parts would say, you know, is this an international or what are you working on? If it is an international, give them a VIN number. They'll pull it up, they'll get you the right thing by VIN. If it happens to be another brand or a trailer uh, of any sort, we'll try to identify it by some of the things that I mentioned uh, best we can. We just need to make sure you get the right chamber. You cannot mix two chambers up, two different ones on the same axle, it'd throw your brakes off. They just won't wire even, they won't work right. So let's got those. Uh, <clears throat> move over here to this rear. This is a this is a rear uh, brake chamber, complete assembly, again. <clears throat> Has a park brake on the bottom half. Our upper half is a service brake. When you hit your pedal, this is what works. When you pull your park brake on, this is what works. This is where the 1800 pound pressure spring is that's very dangerous and as you can see they've got it crimped where you can't take it apart this end you can you can put a new diaphragm or, or a pancake in there <clears throat> so we go back this is a this is a square port this is a welded on clevis with two pins that means this was 100 percent specifically designed for a truck for one 95 and up long stroke chambers with automatic slack adjusters. So one of the things we can help identify the difference if you don't know is uh is uh <laughs> you guys are over here messing with <laughs> some guys picking on me over here. <clears throat> Feel like I'm the weatherman today. Uh, there's a few things we can ask for one, do you know if your truck has ABS system? Uh if it does, that gets us up there where we now know it's ABS, so we know it's not gonna be a short stroke. It's gonna be a long stroke. Uh, don't really have to ask the question if it's automatic slack adjusters because we already know that. Uh, but again, we'll ask if it's a square port or round port, around the port, I'll say, the molding. And uh, we just want to make sure we get you the right thing. I had a customer come in about three months ago and he said, come out here and look at my truck and trailer. I've got a feeling I've got a wrong chamber on here. So I went out and uh, he didn't like my news that much because I ended up finding three in between his trailer and his truck that were wrong. And that's a huge ticket. Uh, if you happen to get inspected at the scales or get pulled over, uh, like I said, a DOT, they're not gonna crawl under it and, and uh, do, a, do a big inspection uh, or have to. This is the main reason they put the square and round ports. So that's just a few things on brake chambers and we, we're not gonna get into detail on how they work and all that and how you adjust them. We got mechanics here in the shop that uh, you know, be more than happy to install them for you if you never have. But uh, next time we may uh, we may talk about uh, something else, a few little tech tips. Uh, but anyway, y'all have a good afternoon and uh, stop in and see us. Bluegrass International Trucks off uh, Exit 41, I-75, London, Kentucky. Have a nice day.